Horrible scenes in Christchurch when a scurrilous beer manufacturer managed to get a man to take a catch in the crowd whilst wearing a t-shirt advertising their unofficial beer. Ambush marketing at the worst water dock. Unforgivable. Yeah. We're at Glenelg for South Australia vs Western Australia. Behind us is Callum Ferguson, Mark Cosgrove, Michael Hogan, the big names of cricket, really. Uh, you told me this was a ball-by-ball -ball recreation of the first ever test match in 1977. You brought me here under false pretenses. Mark Cosgrove probably knows it. Athletic is some of those men, to be fair. Possibly. Um, so we've now had Sri Lanka have lost, Pakistan have lost, England have lost, Zimbabwe have lost. Spoiler alert. A spoiler alert. Yeah, sorry if you've been saving those games up to catch up with them later. Um, ruined it. This now means, uh, if we go on cricket logic, and, 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 and we are, uh, that none of those teams can win. Hogwash, Jared. Absolute hogwash. Here's a stat for you. 100% of all previous Cricket World Cups played on this continent have been won by a team that got absolutely spanked in its first game. Admittedly, that is only from a statistical sample of one previous World Cup. But you can't argue with maths. Pakistan 1992 lost their opening game by 10 wickets. In their third game, they're about to get absolutely horse saved by the rain. No result. Lost their fourth and fifth games. Three defeats in five. Went on to win the World Cup. That is the blueprint for success in this part of the world. And you know it. You as an Australian, you know your team have blown their chances by absolutely by thrashing winning. England yeah. in every possible department it, of cricket. It was a mistake. There will be people who will write off those four teams. Not us, of course, because we've done the one bit of research that we've done. Yep. Um, but uh, I, what I found most interesting was that so many teams come in with such analysis and such backroom support and, and, and so many different thoughts, and England just go, do you know that James Taylor? He looks like he's in pretty good form. Let's push him down the order. <laughs> And you know that Safraz Ahmed? We've been using him as a wicketkeeper, and he's quite a punchy little batsman. Let's get rid of him and right. just pick some bloke off the street with a surname of Akmal. Can you hear me in the ivory towers? ICC, private gentlemen's clubs, people trying to kick out all these other associate nations. Oh, we don't want uneven matches and all this sort of nonsense. Yet again, Ireland has embarrassed you. They don't have test status. You won't give them that. You wouldn't give them a vote even if they got test status. You're trying to keep the game for yourself. And yet again, Ireland come in, amateurs and semi-professionals come in and they embarrass you. They do it over and over and over again. I tell you what, the next time you try and kick them out of a World Cup, me and Ireland are coming back and we're gonna hit you as hard as we can with ambush marketing and non-official, unlicensed merchandise. Your biggest fear. We've both got young kids. They're probably not quite following the World Cup at the way that we want them to for a stats guru. But uh, what's the... Speak I for yourself, Jared. What, what was the I was there moment that you're going to uh, tell them about? Well, it's one of the great things about coming to great sporting events, being able to tell those descendants of yours, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-great-grandchildren, depending on how medical science develops. You say, I was there when Stephen Finn took a hat-trick at the MCG, one of the great moments in English cricket history. England's first Fifer at the G in any match since Dean Headley in 1998-99. Surely one of the greatest bowling performances of all time. Or, you might think, as the most expensive Fifer, I believe, in the history of uh, ODI cricket. I guess if you're going to go on the honours board for a Fifer, great moment. But I think when that type of five, when you've had basically three men caught in the last over having a hoik, you should just quietly go up and say, just... Put it on. Don't well, put it on. I don't mind. Tim May once said that when he took five for nine, he didn't feel like he really owned his wickets. I mean, to be fair to Stephen Finn, he, he, he paid a heavy <laughs> price for those wickets. That's right, yeah. So, Doc, ICC Chief Davy Richardson said recently that the World Cup should be played between teams that are evenly matched and competitive. Australia, England, then, have a strange choice for the opening game. Hey, Doc. Well, that was never a run out. The game should be declared a tie. I'd have put the bales back on. Well, there were three other not particularly evenly matched and competitive games on the opening weekend. But England took the uneven biscuit and the uncompetitive cake in one disappointing picnic of uselessness, I'd say. Doc.
Well, I was thinking more of the kind of mismatch where I planked you for 170 and battered you colonials like a very guilty sausage at the Oval in 1886. You might remember getting me out, Frederick, for 170. Yeah, well, it was a bit of a mismatch when I clean bowled you for Nord at Lords in 1978 on a way to match figures of 10 for 20 against MCC. Remember that game when I danced around shouting, I'm a demon, I'm a demon. Hey, Captain Whiskers. The way I looked at the Adelaide Oval last night was blue with a little streak of green through the middle. It was probably one of my favourite experiences ever of being in the ground. And I should point out that it was so hot that at one stage, even my shirt was sweating. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a great atmosphere, very reminiscent of the cricket I used to watch as a kid, watching Kent play in Tunbridge Wells in the county championships, but arguably a little bit more so. Uh, wonderful atmosphere. It had a kind of music to it the, the, throughout the kind of eight, eight hours of mayhem, the yeah. sort of peaks and trials. It was a great, great occasion. I, I saw a great moment where an Indian fan was so excited by one of the last wickets that he jumped back and fell seven rows and smashed his head into a chair, got up, <laughs> and continued the, the, the jump and the dance he was doing just before. That is, that is what cricket supporting is all about, yeah. significant head injuries. Yeah, I mean, it, it was probably only let down by the game, really. The actual, yeah. the actual supporters outdid the game, I'd <laughs> say about 10 to 1. Yeah, it took, uh, I guess, something of a predictable path, didn't it? Over Pakistan bowled OK, but India's batting without being particularly brilliant, still scored 300, which shows what a strong batting team they are. You'd think Pakistan, they do struggle with uh, the bit of wood that you're supposed to hold in your hands, it does seem a bit, um, anything over two, I was thinking anything over 250 for Pakistan is going to be tricky, you reckon 230? Yeah. I think I might be revising it down, 200 against a good team, it's not looking good. I've always said this, if Pakistan could play with the sort of energy their fans do, I just don't think they could lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems to be quite a big if at the moment. Did you see that streaker in Christchurch? What a flaming galah! Oh, flame your galah's big horse. Nothing wrong with a larger physique, Frederick. Well, not all of him was a larger physique. Testify. Cold day. Cold day.